Good morning, Jocelyn. Good morning, Kathleen. Okay, it says we're live. All right. And my picture's still not showing. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. No.
Hello, good morning. Welcome to our very first Facebook worship service of St. David's Episcopal Church. I am Pastor Jocelyn Hughes, the new rector, and I'm so excited that this is my first Sunday with you. As it is my first Sunday, I want to introduce my family who are here with us. This is Madeline. Madeline, Zachary, David, and Chris, who is our tech deacon for this worship service. Thanks, everybody. We all look forward to meeting you in person. Our service bulletin can be downloaded from our website at stdavidschurch.com. The words will also be on the screen. We invite you to pray and sing and participate as you feel comfortable doing so. With that, let us begin with um, our service of morning prayer, right to. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Open our lips, 
and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Let us say together the Pascha Nostrum. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me, the grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostle. Hmm. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostle. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, brother, what should we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children and for all who are far away everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them saying, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed this message were baptized. And that day about 3,000 3, people, persons were added. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. together canticle eight the song of moses i will sing to the lord for he is lofty and uplifted the horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea the lord is my strength and my refuge the lord has become my savior this is my god and i will praise him the god of my people and i will exalt him the lord is a mighty warrior Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand. The earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of, to Peter. If you invoke as the Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during. during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways of your inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God, the, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty. 
The gospel reading today is very fitting, fitting not only in a worldly sense and an earthly sense, but also. You're not on yet. Oh, we are not on yet. Okay. Can we put me on? Okay. The gospel we're reading this morning is a very fitting gospel. It fits in perfectly with our crisis that we're living today, as it was a crisis in our Lord's time. And I feel a special kin with the two men that are walking on their way to Emmaus. And Cleophas especially, who has Christ right in front of him and doesn't recognize him. How often we do that when we have a person of Christ's image with us and we don't recognize him. Now on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other on your way walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them said, whose name was Cleophas, and answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And our own chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, he is now the third day since they th these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find the body there, they came back and told them that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it had just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are. How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of them as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because of its almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So we went into them to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while we were talking to him on the road? While he was opening the scriptures to us, that same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened to them on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. 
the gospel of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Friends in Christ, I speak to you today in the name of God, who is our creator, our redeemer, and our eternal sustainer. Amen. A year ago, God and I started having conversations about me possibly seeking a new call, a new ministry in the church. I had stepped out of full-time ministry a year before that due to some new circumstances within my family. With those resolved, I realized I deeply missed working and felt ready to dive back in. But what was I being called to do? I started reading job postings and parish profiles. I've worked in churches and in chaplaincy and with nonprofits. What was next? I felt I could do a number of things and having taken a slightly different career path, the next step was a little unclear. After much prayer and discernment, I decided to seek a community as opposed to a specific job. I wanted to find a community of people who love God, love each other, and want to serve their neighbors. I believe I found that community here at St. David's. And when I accepted this call back in January, I had so many ideas and dreams about what this first Sunday and these first weeks and months together would be like. Needless to say, nothing about today is how I thought it would be, how any of us thought it would be. Instead of being in San Diego, standing in front of the beautiful altar, looking at all of your faces, I am in our home office staring at a tiny camera. You are on the other side of a screen. This is not how we wanted to be worshiping God together today. I had hoped today would be different. We never thought we would be in the middle of a worldwide pandemic in which 200,000 people have died, including 50,000 Americans. We never imagined we'd be sheltering in place trying not to get sick or unknowingly spread this virus to others. I mean, who could have imagined that right now, so many would be suffering, millions unemployed, facing hunger, unable to see loved ones in nursing homes and hospitals, essential workers needing protective equipment, all deeply mired in uncertainty for if or when it will be safe to resume our lives. No, none of this is what we thought we'd be facing right now. Our world has been upended and that brings grief and sadness and fear for many people. It's heartbreaking and many of us can't help but feel a deep sense of loss and disappointment. We had hoped and believed our lives would be different. When life throws us these twists and turns, we have to regroup and discern what God is calling us to do, how we can adjust, and what new opportunities may await us in this new reality. It's hard to do but it helps to remember that we are not the first to be going through something like this. Indeed, this place of sadness and deep disappointment is where we find the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Here they are on Easter day, walking and talking about what has happened. And Jesus walks with them but they don't know that it's him. So they tell him about the terrible things that have happened. And they say, 
we had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. That is, he was their dream come true. They hoped he would save them from the Roman occupation, that he would liberate the people and restore Israel to autonomy and freedom. This is what they have prayed for for generations. And they thought their prayers had finally been answered. To say they are disappointed is an understatement. They are heartbroken. They are devastated. Their dream has died. And their hope for the future, for a better future, has died with Jesus. So Jesus stays and talks with them. And when he was about to leave them, they ask him to remain and eat with them. So he does. And of course, once he blesses and breaks the bread, they realize it is Jesus, that he has been with them all along. Then he vanishes. They kick themselves for not seeing it sooner. I mean, again, this is Easter day. So they already know that the tomb is empty and yet they still don't believe it. So many of our post Easter scripture readings tell us about how hard it was for the disciples, the people who were there to accept that Jesus was raised from the dead. After the crucifixion, as far as they knew, nothing was ever going to be okay again. Their friend was brutally killed, and they surmised that they were likely next. These disciples are probably getting out of Dodge for that very reason. This is the absolute lowest point for them. And yet, Jesus is with them when they don't know, can't see that it is him. He is there in their grief and disappointment. He stays with them, comforts them, doesn't abandon them until they know that it's him, until they know the truth that love doesn't die. Jesus can't stay with them on earth, which would have been what they wanted most. But he does show them that God didn't let evil win and that his spirit and love live on in them. With this knowledge, they run run back to the other disciples to tell them that they found Jesus in the breaking of the bread. My friends in Christ, so many people right now are suffering from loss and grief, fear and terror, disappointment and heartbreak. It is overwhelming. But the message I take from this encounter on the road to Emmaus is that we are called to be present with each other in these difficult times. We can't be physically present, and that is so hard. But there are many other ways to be present and show God's love to each other during this difficult time. This is what we are called to do as Christians to be in the midst of suffering, to share with each other the eternal love of Christ Jesus. Yes, love does win. That is the truth of the resurrection. And we are resurrection people. May we endeavor to be the ones 
who are present with those who are hurting and sick. And when we are hurting, to seek those who can be Christ for us. And please remember that we can see Jesus every time here in this community gathered and walking alongside each of us, he is there, whether we recognize him or not. Remember that nothing, not a cross, not suffering, not death or a worldwide pandemic can ever separate us from Jesus and God's love. Amen. Now let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Using the words our Lord Jesus Christ taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Episcopal Church of Jerusalem and the Middle East. In our diocese, for the clergy and people of St. James by the Sea, La Jolla, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. I ask your prayers for Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, for Jocelyn, our priest, and Wayne and Jim, our associate priest, and all other ministers, and for all the people of this congregation who minister in Christ's name that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us now offer our own petitions and thanksgivings, especially for those on our church prayer list. Are there other petitions or thanksgivings you wish to offer? Holy and gracious God, give us the strength to meet the health crisis looming around us enlighten researchers that they may discover the right treatments and a vaccine against this disease. Guide the doctors, nurses, and all medical technicians working with those who are infected to take correct actions for their care. Protect all medical staff and family or friends caring for those who are ill. Protect the essential workers who enable us to live while share sheltering in place. Bring together the governments and governmental agencies around the world to work together to eradicate this health threat. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks 
for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Lord, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>